Hello everyone, I'm Dan the Man, and I'm back for another season of Big Brother. Be afraid, be very afraid, of Cody. Seriously, be very afraid of Cody. What's up with that dude? So, we're back with another season of Big Brother, and even though there have only been two episodes, I have plenty to talk about, as Big Brother's next sure to become a clusterfuck twist has begun, and one person already was sent packing. Given the nature of the premiere, I was not sure where to begin, so I think I'll start with the twist. Short answer, I don't like it, but I don't like any of their stupid ticking time bomb of bad twists, so what else is new? My biggest problem with this one is that it reeks of producer interference. These twists are too easy for them to doctor and mold the season into whatever narrative they want to tell. That and I hate fan voting. Want to know the main reason I didn't do over the top, besides fatigue was kicking in from covering Big Brother 18? The fact it was all about the fan vote, and I did not want to bitch about it all season, and no one wanted to hear it. I'll do my best not to do that this time. Thankfully the fans don't have the level of control they had in over the top, but obviously it'll be hard to ignore. It would be one thing if they did like they did in Over the Top with the care packages, and they laid out all the temptations ahead of time. Then, if nothing else, no one could claim they were making them up on the fly to feed the narrative they wanted. Some spoilers of the next two Den of Temptations have leaked due to people checking the source code of the voting page, so clearly BB has some future plans for this, but not having the fans know ahead of time still comes off pretty sketchy. They also didn't tell the consequences at all, which could lead the fans feeling ripped off if they try to give a good reward to their favorite, who then turns around to get screwed by a consequence. Hard to judge that or not, but still a worry to me. Not to mention, since we don't know them, they can easily make something up to once again further along the narrative they want to do. Producer manipulation is nothing new. If you're a fan of this show long enough, you eventually reach the point where you can't deny production is shady at times and either enjoy the show for what it is or stop watching because of the unfairness of it bothers you. But it doesn't mean being blatant about it isn't annoying. And speaking of annoying, that brings me to the first temptation and its consequence. Paul is back in the house because BB hates me. Although on the bright side, it's one less stick figure I have to make for these videos. Wait, he came in 17th. I'm still going to have to make 16 more of these. Yeah, screw you, Paul. In all seriousness, while I dislike him, his coming back in and of itself doesn't really bother me. What bugs me is the fact he took someone's place. Yeah, I get it, they want to shock at the beginning, but to pull the rug out from under someone before they really have a chance to play is a bullshit move, no matter how many times they want to do it. Yeah, the fact it was Cameron made it worse, as it was a longtime fan who really wanted to be there, but I'd feel the same way if it was someone clearly recruited who wanted to be on TV and knew nothing about Big Brother. Recruit or longtime fan, you still go through multiple interviews, have to make arrangements to leave your life for up to three months, are put up in a hotel for almost a week before entering, and get a once in a lifetime opportunity. To make that practically for nothing, just for a gimmick, is beyond unfair. And to do it so they can bring back someone who already had that chance and made good on it when they could have just inserted him is just plain bullshit. Some will argue if Kevin didn't make the temptation, Paul wouldn't be in. But the fact is, multiple people pressed the button. He was just the fastest. And why wouldn't they? $25,000 guaranteed, with no chance of people knowing you did it. The ones who didn't press it are the crazy ones. Big Brother knew that someone would press it. They made the prize money too huge to resist for just that reason. Yeah, by some fluke, everyone said no and held to their guns. Much like when a similar thing happened in Big Brother 1, Big Brother would have been left reeling. But unlike that time, when the game was over half over, this was out of the gate. No way were 16 people all turning that kind of money down. So Paul came in and someone else got screwed. Like I said, this is all part of Big Brother and Cameron is hardly the first person to be screwed by the twist, but it was not fun watching someone be unfairly dinked over. Yeah, if it was someone I liked coming in instead of Paul, it probably would have bothered me a little bit less, but it would be no less of a scummy move on Big Brother's part. So moving beyond that, let's talk about the vote to get Cameron out. Was he the right choice? Definitely. Taking away the BS of being in that situation, the House had to vote someone out, and Cameron was definitely the best one to vote out. Some would argue Christmas was the bigger threat, and while I think she is someone to watch, I disagree she was the one that should have gone home between the three people on the block. Fans and players alike tend to look at the cool kids and the comp beasts as the threats that need to be squashed out immediately. But the truth is, since Big Brother 14, a super fan has won every time. And except for Derek, it has been a card-carrying nerdy super fan. 
Cameron is the biggest threat, and despite how the entity made it look, they were 100% right to get rid of him before his non-threatening demeanor made him overlooked until his quirky charm won everyone over, and the next thing, they were all giving him the money because it's his dream. And Cameron knew this and definitely came in to play up that advantage. So while I feel bad for the kid, the house guests made the right decision. Although given how the votes came down and that all the girls voted for him to go, I'm guessing that the girls not wanting to be outnumbered was also a big reason. But that was the right choice too, as even with Nicole winning last season and Morgan winning over the top, the winners are still hugely skewed towards the guys. With the girls only winning 7 out of 19 seasons so far counting over the top. That's over twice as many male winners, so the girls are wise to not let themselves be outnumbered before they have time to even get a fill for the house. So with all that out of the way, on to the nomination episode. First off, Cody went and had a household. This is not surprising since he said multiple times in pre-show interviews that he wanted to win the first head of household. Considering how few want to win that thing, I knew if he wanted it that badly he would probably get it as most would be throwing it. And hey, he rained on Paul's parade, so that was fun. Cody wasted no time in putting up two people not in his alliance, an alliance which seems to want to be consist of recreating the popular crew in high school and targeting the misfits. I personally would have picked those two last if I wanted to target someone from that group of his appointed misfits, but I'm not a stoic ex-soldier who only has one facial expression and thinks everyone should be like me or f screw them and fuck anyone who wants to play BB differently than me. They're beneath contempt and I'll tell them so to their face. So what do I know? It seemed pretty clear he was wanting to backdoor someone, likely Paul, so I think he picked two people he thought were less likely to get him back later with the attention to backdoor. So he's not as badass and out of the ordinary as he wants to believe in his gameplay. However, his nominations were not the biggest story once the feeds went up. Which brings me to spoilers. Normally I'm going to try to avoid any spoilers except for who one had a household if it's not revealed on the live show. But this one is so big and changes so much, I feel it would be ridiculous to even comment further on the nominations without mentioning it. So if you don't want to hear spoilers, stop now. Seriously, stop now. Last chance. Okay, you were warned. Megan has left the show. That's right, Megan has made history by being the first person to self-evict from Big Brother US. Yes, Dick and Neil both left also, and as an aside, be impressed I brought up Neil because I had to look the dude's name up, I completely forgot what it was. But those were both for personal reasons. Dick because he learned he had HIV, and Neil for... Well, they actually never said, just personal reasons, but it was said to be some kind of an emergency, and not because he self-evicted. So what happened? Why did Megan leave so quickly? Well, she was gone by the time the feeds went live, so we don't know the details completely until the episode airs. But according to the house guests, she got into a conflict with several people, including Josh, Cody, Jessica, and Matt, went to the DR, it never came out, and the house guests were told she left the game. Their talk is she got caught in a web of lies and couldn't handle the backlash. There seems to be a variation on what exactly the lies are, or what exactly the details were, but everyone including her early allies pretty much has the same thing. She got caught in a web of lies, she couldn't handle it. So what that web of lies of is slightly less detail, but I'm sure we'll get a little bit more answers once the live show airs. There is more to the story though. Since the feeds went live, Megan has stated in interviews that she has PTSD stemming from being sexually assaulted while she was stationed in Norfolk, Virginia. The fourth story was revealed in the Desert Sun's website, including a video statement from Megan. I'll put the link in the description if anyone wants to check it out themselves. But the short story is she was assaulted and has PTSD from it, and while she thought she'd be okay in the house, having a bunch of guys aggressively going after her made her have a breakdown in the diary room, which led to her and her producers agreeing that she needed to leave the show. There have been accusations of her making this up to save face, although pretty premature thing to say when we haven't seen what happened yet, but I have no reason to not believe her. Big Brother has talked people out of leaving plenty of times before, so I think if she left she was either dead set on going home more than anyone has ever been in the past, or legit had a breakdown and Big Brother was worried about putting her back in. Either way, I wish her the best in whatever happens. Big Brother fans are very harsh, and she'll get some serious backlash and judgment for this move, so best of luck in her in dealing with that. Fans do need to try to remember that while we can say, I never would have left the show if I got that opportunity, we don't actually know what we would do in that kind of a unique situation. It's much easier to talk trash like that, knowing full well we will almost surely never be in there and have to put our money where our mouth is. Either way, she's gone, the producers are likely regretting getting rid of Cameron hours into the game now, and many fans have argued he should be let back in, and someone else has come on the block in her place. 
I reserve giving away who that is so as not to completely spoil Sunday's episode. But suffice it to say, this looks like it's already shaping up to be an insane season, and I hope to be with you guys every step of the way. Thanks for watching. I'll be back for the eviction episode on Thursday for my thought on next week's Big Brother Insanity. I'm Dan the Man, and I'll see you next time. Oh,